from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special Cube conversation. You know, Hewlett Packard Enterprise has gone through one of the most significant transformations in the history of the tech business. Once a much larger and far-flung conglomerate, HP, as you know, split in two, and now HPE is much more focused and has a completely different posture with respect to technology partners. So today, we're going to focus in on the big drivers of innovation in the technology business, data, AI, and cloud, and get HPE's point of view on trends in these spaces. As well, I want to dig into two areas of growth, hyperconverged infrastructure and intelligent storage. I also want to share some ETR data using SimpliVity and Nimble as proxies for these markets. Finally, we want to peek into some of the spending data in HPE's ecosystem to see how a more partner-friendly HPE is faring. And with me today is Patrick Osborne. Patrick is the Vice President and GM of Big Data Analytics and Scale-Out Data Platforms at Hewlett Packard Enterprise and a friend of theCUBE. Patrick, always a pleasure, thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. So let me set it up here, and um, I want to share some spending data with our audience. Alex, if you bring up the, the first slide I want to show us, this shows the, the latest spending data just released from ETR on the various segments. And, you, and the, it's a double Y axis, and you can see on the left-hand side is the average spend represented by the size of the charts. On the right-hand side is the growth rate represented by the dots. And I've highlighted in green some of the key areas that we're going to talk about. Analytics, BI, big data, you can see 12%, still pretty big market, even 10 years into the big data theme. Cloud computing, you know, growing 15, 16%. MLAI 17%, you can see the container space is growing at between 15 and, and 20%. So Patrick, let's start with what's in your title, the big data, mm. you know, the analytics piece. You know, what are you seeing there? What's HP's story? Yeah, so that's been a, a huge area of growth for us uh, within HPE, not only from an infrastructure, but also a services play. We've got a number of you know, big partners in the traditional you know, big data space. We made a number of uh, you know, strategic acquisitions over the last two years in this area, specifically around Blue Data, MapR, so these areas that customers are you know, continue to invest in in the macro area um, are very important. And I think one of the things you're seeing here from a growth perspective, Perspective is that they're also bringing in some very adjacent markets with AI and ML, so it's part of an entire workflow. So you start off with BI, analytics, big data, and we have a number of solutions uh, around that area. And then starting to add in things like AI, ML, DL, um, into that analytics work, uh, workflow. So it's been really good for us. So you're really kind of adding into your portfolio there, like say the MapR yep. acquisition. They, they kind of were one of the, the big three that started that whole big data movement. And then now you have this organizations with these troves of data and they're trying to figure out, okay, what do we do with it? And that's really where machine intelligence or AI comes in, isn't it? Absolutely, and not only uh, you know we're, are we providing uh, a number of solutions for customers in this area, but we're using it ourselves too, right? To you know uh, enhance our customer experience, uh, enhance our automation, support automation, uh, definitely give a you know much better customer experience with our storage and data platforms. So wait, you're saying your practitioners of AI to make your customers' lives better. Uh, by, and you're saying by embedding that into storage platforms. Absolutely, you know, if you take a look at a number of our marquee services that we have, whether it's things like InfoSight, GreenLake, uh, even Aruba Central, you know, think about uh, some of the things that we do at the edge. Uh, all that is being powered by AI, right, at the end of the day. So we're using those techniques to improve uh, the product and solution experiences for you know a number of our products. You know everything from it started with Nimble. We added three par. Now we've got SimpliVity in the info site, and as we start to bring together some of the workloads at the edge, right, with Aruba and things we're doing there, um, it's you know the customers are obviously voting with their dollars. All right, let's talk about about cloud generally, but specifically I want to get into hybrid and containers. I mean, cloud has permanently changed you know our industry. Everybody wants to bring that cloud model on prem. It's clearly a hybrid world. You can see containers really growing. Uh, Stu Miniman has a premise that, look, containers and Kubernetes, that we treat them as a separate thing, but it's really being embedded into all parts of, of the portfolio. So what's your point of view on, on containers, 
hybrid, bring us up to speed on what HPE is doing there. Yeah, so that's definitely fueling a lot of our, our growth, um, not only in what you think about the traditional storage segments, but as well as HCI, right? So, you know, um, when, when we talk later about some of the growth we're seeing in Nimble and SimpliVity, we've got a number of solutions that sit, you know, directly within this container, uh, container orchestration, container management. We've got, you know, things that we um, develop on our own. We made a huge announcement at KubaCon, right, around the HPE container platform. Uh, so for customers that want to run these analytics, AI, ML, very data oriented um, applications that run in containers, we have uh, a great platform for that, an HPE container platform. Mm -hmm. We can run that on bare metal, we can run that in SimpliVity, for example. So uh, we're seeing a lot of fuel for that, not only just uh, servicing some of the storage and data needs for containers, right? But also being able to provide an InfoSight-like experience for this new generation of application development and workloads. How do you see the edge fitting into this? You know, we had interviewed mm -hmm. Antonio recently with John Chambers at the Pensando announcement, and and that was kind of interesting. Do you do you see that as a as a pendulum swing or sort of an expansion of of the cloud, if you will? Yeah, I definitely see it as an expansion. When we talk at HPE, we want to be an edge to core to cloud, you know, uh, company and uh, helping customers navigate this digital transformation uh, in hybrid IT, right? Uh, and then we're going to offer that to customers as a service through GreenLake. We've been pretty public about that. And so one of the big opportunities we see is around these distributed data centers. Some people define it as distributed edge, whether that's customers who are doing autonomous vehicles, uh, autonomous drilling. Uh, we see a number of um, you know, big box retailers, you know, for example, that don't necessarily have a traditional data center, but it's not so far out into the edge that it's like an autonomous vehicle, but they have you know, the similar concerns in terms of a distributed nature, how do you automate that, how do you manage that at scale? And so these assets that we bring together with things like Aruba and our edge line servers and managing that data experience is something that we're going to capitalize on in in FY20 for our customers. Retail's interesting, right? Everybody has a Amazon war room, but many sectors of retail are really on fire right now. People trying to take advantage of their their store presence, yep. and IoT is a, a big factor there. So you're seeing a, a lot of that action as, as HPE. Yeah, absolutely, and those, customer, those customers of ours are fueling their growth through digital transformation. So they're using containers and Kubernetes and this new style of application development, and they want to be able to distribute those data centers and that data, but they also have to make it simple, right? So you see the march towards what we, uh, you know, our platforms like SimpliVity for HCI, uh, some of the offerings we have around, you know, uh, independently scalable, uh, three-tiered architectures, but you get the best of HCI with that. We call it Nimble DHCI, right? So we have a number of offerings for customers who, you know, really want that scale uh, and uh, and serviceability. All right, let's 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 pivot a little bit and talk about some of that infrastructure, Alex. Alex, you bring up the next slide. What I want to talk here is this is the ETR data. Every time they do one of these surveys, they ask, are you essentially you're spending more or are you spending less? And they subtract the less from the more, and that's what they call net score. Net score, remember, is a measure of spending momentum. Now, what we've done here is you can see the filtered in uh, 313 HPE customers out of the 1,000 plus survey respondents uh, this quarter. Mm. And you can see a good mix of enterprise size and industry, and it's a lot of North America, but, but good regional too. And we're showing the net scores uh, breakdown for, for two of your platforms, SimpliVity, which is the HCI, and Nimble Storage. Um, and you can see the bright green is people adding to the platform, the sort of darker green is spending more. So let's start with SimpliVity. HCI, still a really hot and growing space. You've got a net score of 38% almost, which is very, very strong in the e ETR parlance. You know, it's not off the charts like some new tech, but it's really, really solid. So what's the update on SimpliVity and HCI? Yeah, so I mean, this is obviously, uh, it, from, a, from a market perspective, HCI is a rapidly growing space still, right? Um, there's a lot of room for growth, both brownfield as well as greenfield opportunities in the core data center, at the edge, uh, even in hybrid cloud format. So for us, it's all about new logo acquisition for SimpliVity. We've shown phenomenal growth rate uh, for that technology stack. Um, 
developed here in Massachusetts, right? Great local company, great story. Um, and so for us, this HCS, the, the markets that we're playing in, when you take a look at storage and data management in general, sub-segments of the market are growing rapidly, right? You take a look at uh, HCI, you take a look at SDS, um, you take a look at all flash, and so we have some great offerings in that space that are completely differentiated uh, from a customer experience and a technology experience, and they work together. So for example, SimpliVity, we just announced earlier in the, and later in the calendar year in 2019 that we would be offering SimpliVity uh, within InfoSight, right? So you have the same experience that you get from Nimble, right, you get with our HCI products. So we're driving those experiences together. Uh, obviously, you know, all flash is a huge uh, growing category within storage. Nimble, it's got some great growth there, uh, not only just for new logo adoptions, but expansion capabilities. So we're, you know, two, two great products that we're seeing some success in. Yeah, so let's talk about Nimble. Uh, Alex, if we could show that data again. So Nimble's got a net score of 46%, which again, a lot of momentum. I mean, smaller, you know, sample size, but still really, you know, strong. And you can see it's a more mature market. So you see maybe fewer adoptions, but Almost 50% of your customers are saying they're going to spend more this, this, this quarter relative to last period. So that's showing momentum. You mentioned InfoSight, which is yep. really the technology that sort of Nimble brought to your company, which you're pushing out through the portfolio. So your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, customers are, you know, the, the products themselves are great uh, and they, they provide the customers a really good experience. We're driving all that together at a meta layer, right? So when we talk about the products and the solutions, for us, the strategy is around the intelligent data platform. Right, so we have a number of platforms that can help address a number of different workloads, whether it's HCI, disaggregated HCI, whether it's all flash, whether it's you know, container workloads and container orchestration, but we want to provide a very uh, good experience that you can consume as a service, and we're driving that together across product lines with um, data services that work both on-prem and in the cloud, right? So we have HPE uh, cloud volumes and a number of our cloud data services that tie these platforms together. So for us, it's all about a strategy around this intelligent data platform, not just individual products. The individual products are great, but from a strategy perspective, that is definitely resounding with customers. Well, you talked about digital transformation earlier, Patrick. I think that's important. It's, it, customers want solutions. They don't want to, certainly don't want to provision loans. They don't want to, think about managing boxes, so they really want that infrastructure to be invisible, they want to push their folks up the stack yep. to just do more strategic things, and it's, it's really your R&D that they're looking toward to automate a lot of those mundane tasks, isn't it? Yeah, they look towards R&D as well as they look to HPE as a portfolio company mm -hmm. to bring together a solution stack that's going to work for them. And sometimes that solution stack is comprised of some of our partners as well. So we pick uh, some of the best partners in the industry to go work with in some of these hottest you know, portions of the market that are growing significantly. So in the areas of HCI or in the areas of software defined storage, uh, you know, we've got a number of folks that we, uh, that we partner with, hybrid cloud, um, and we are able to bring you know, a full complete solution to a customer, uh, and we de-risk that for our customers at the end of the day, right? We've got some great partnerships with some great companies, and that's really you know, suited HPE very well. Well, great segue. Let's talk about some of those partnerships. So you're, you're, when, when Hewlett Packard split into two companies, it opened up a ton of opportunities for partnerships for you guys. You got a great distribution channel, and what I'm showing here, Alex, on this next slide, if you bring this up, is three partners that are gaining a lot of momentum based on the spending, ETR spending data in, in the surveys. Cohesity, Veeam, and Nutanix. Now remember, um, ETR uses this concept of, uh, of net score, which we talked about, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but also market share. Market share is a measure of pervasiveness. In other words, how, how much they're being mentioned inside of the survey. So I'm showing here market shares, but also net scores. And you can see Cohesity um, is just starting in the survey. So starting to you know, get more noticed. Um, and then you can see Veeam and Nutanix you know, with the consistent, long, steady market share growth. This is again within the Hewlett Packard Enterprise account base, that 313 respondents. So you can see there, all three are doing very well. And, and look at the net scores for Cohesity off the charts, 74%, growing very, very rapidly. Again, smaller sample size. Uh, Nutanix, much larger sample size, you know, 60% net score, so very, very strong, and Veeam, 
you know, surprisingly for a pretty mature company with a 45% net score, again, very, very strong. So talk about the, the partnerships, the new HPE partner uh, posture, and then we can maybe get into what you're seeing in the market with some of these partners. Yeah, so for, for, for HPE, you know, we listen to our customers in terms of you know, what their, their challenges are. Uh, part of my business is managing around scale out data platforms, and so the data is always growing, and so we're seeing you know, this big trend of scale out architectures powered by you know, ubiquitous, very high bandwidth, low latency networking uh, in the data center and outside the data center. And so we're able to you know, put some of these software stacks on our infrastructure that works very well with our, um, our, our, you know, our own IP solutions and you know, solve a number of critical problems for customers around secondary storage, right? It's growing, you want to make use of it. Um, to back up and disaster recovery is always a problem. It's, it's definitely an opportunity around hybrid cloud. HCI and, and SDS, right, has many forms and flavors, right, and we want to be able to provide those solutions to our customers, uh, especially if you're doing hybrid or private cloud. So a lot of these partners, uh, you know, we want to you know, provide a full stack solution to our customers, and you know, these partners help us do that. How are you, I mean, the, the you've got HCI with Nutanix, and you've got HCI with SimpliVity, you've got sort of certainly Veeam and Cohesity compete. Yep. How do you guys position and the, let's start with the HCI piece. How, do you just let customers sort of direct you and, and guide you, or do you guide them? How does that all work? Uh, yeah, I mean, we always listen to the customer first, uh, but at the end of the day, we, you know, we lead with our own IP. We have, some, you know, we have two great solutions around the uh, HCI framework, where you going for um, uh, a, a very simple, very scalable solution in SimpliVity that has some very powerful data services, great economics um, for the HCI market, and you know we, you see the growth in SimpliVity for that. Then we have a number of other uh, solutions specifically around Nimble called DHCI, right? Uh, what we're finding is that customers, there's a class of customers that want to, they want the simplicity of management that you'd get from, from HCI, but they also want to be able to independently scale your compute, your networking and your storage, mm -hmm. and we're able to provide that with something like Nimble, ProLiant, our networking stack, uh, and then plug that all into InfoSight. And it works together, right? So at the end of the day, if I have an, a, a workload that's more appropriate to work at, on SimpliVity as a platform, or it's more appropriate for DHCI, we can recognize that for our customers through predictive analytics. We can automate the placement of that workload, and then we provide customers a set of data services so those platforms work together. So it really works out well. Okay, and then and, and in terms of, um, well, take, take the situation with Nutanix, so that's a, a customer saying, hey, we want you guys to work together, and you say, great, no yeah, problem, absolutely. We'll, we'll do that. So that, you know, uh, they used to say. Yeah, and we have a set of recipes and, uh, and reference architectures and offerings around those that are available direct, as well as through the channel. And is it fair to say that, that Veeam, I mean, Veeam is you know, renowned in the SMB, uh, even though they've tried a big push in the enterprise, you're part of that, that push, and, and, and of course, you know, Cohesity's the hot new kid in the block. Um, again, is it just sort of, market pull that, that drives that, or do you have a? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, uh, Veeam has been recognized as a great uh, solution for customers doing, you know, start off, you know, certainly focused directly on, on virtualization, and then, uh, you know, their, their strategy has moved, uh, and, you know, to a very adjacent market, which is how do I, you know, tackle that virtualization and, and VMs and protecting my data, but in a hybrid cloud mm -hmm. format. So they're definitely all in on cloud. I think Cohesity has a very scalable file system backend, and it started off with backup and recovery, and now is moving into some very adjacent uh, use cases around files, secondary storage, what can I do around CI, CD pipelines. So it's uh, it kind of approaching it from different Different angles. So you guys are really kind of changing your marketing and your product marketing, really focusing more on solutions. Yes, um, outcomes. Customer outcomes, bringing that cloud model to wherever your data lives, whether it's on-prem, at the edge, um, talking about bringing containers throughout the portfolio. Bring it home, what are you sort of hoping for 2020 looks like? What are some of those outcomes and what should we expect from, from your 
per perspective from HPE? Yeah, so I mean, we at, at HPE are very focused on this edge to core to cloud concept, uh, hybrid IT. So all of our products have you know some sort of endemic, whether it's data services or a management uh, paradigm around hybrid cloud. And so we you know we we really are you'll you'll see that within our products, product releases, solution releases, the people that we partner with. Um, and I think the big thing that we you know pivoted into at the end of 2019, you'll see this accelerate significantly in 2020, is around this consumption model, right? The cloud consumption model with uh, GreenLake. Right. So you know, we talked a little bit about you know, certainly GreenLake from a financial perspective, but also GreenLake as a management uh, paradigm. So GreenLake Central was announced at the end of the year, and just the ability to be able to, you know, like you do in the top of cloud, right? But top of private cloud or top of hybrid cloud from HPE, and get a, you know really good visibility financially into into what you're doing. I mean, it's a mindset too from the top. I mean, Antonio is saying everything is a service, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, Patrick. Hey, thanks for coming in and giving us the update on on HPE. Good luck this year, and uh, great to see you. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>